And folks, welcome back. As you can tell, I've got an outstanding coach sitting next to me, uh, the Clay Chalkwell Cougars, the boys coach, and Jeremy Monso. Coach, uh, awfully good to see you. Yeah, good we to be go back. Way, way back. It has been right. a while, right. and uh, but we've um, known <coughs> each other a good while. And um, for people that might be seeing you for the first time, uh, tell us a little bit about your background and what has led you to be the head basketball coach here at Clay Chalk. Um, well, obviously, I, I played high school basketball in Birmingham, and, and obviously that's where we know you from uh -huh. when I was at Parkway Christian and all along to school. Um, went off and spent uh, four years playing college basketball at Liberty University, which kind of allowed me to get into college coaching there with some of the relations I've made and uh, spent seven years uh, coaching at the college level at various institutions, the last one being uh, Faulkner University there in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after three seasons there, uh, got a phone call from a, from an athletic director who was here at the time um, about this position and uh, was excited about uh, being part of it and been a Cougar now for five years and, and still excited about uh, trying to grow our program every day. Well, I know, like I said, our, our relationship goes all the way back to your high school days. But uh, back then, uh, you were a prolific shooter scorer. And uh, I remember many ball games. Boy, I just had a whole lot of fun watching you play. And, and I wonder, uh, Jeremy, of course, your, your father being a coach and coaching you and other kids through the years, did you ever have the idea in the back of your mind one day that you might get into the coaching business? Uh, I pretty much wanted to coach my whole life, really. Um, you know, now, uh, at, you know, when I was coming up a little younger and had different priorities, I kind of always saw myself as 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 being on the college level. Uh, but you know, when when you get a little older and you get married and you start having little ones mm -hmm. running around, uh, that that recruiting road doesn't seem so so appealing anymore. Um, but uh, being around the game of basketball uh, has been the the, the the greatest joy of my life um, outside of, of, of my relationship with Christ and my marriage. But um, I love being around these young people. Um, I love getting up every day and, and, and knowing that we're going to compete for something that day, whether it's in season or off season. And, and um, not being around it, um, I, I, I wouldn't really know what else I would be doing. So. Well, I know we <laughs> talked with Coach Haney a moment ago, and, and I want you to expand on it from – um, your point of view, what kind of season did you expect out of this group uh -huh. that you've got this year? Because I know you got a few seniors sure. on this team. Sure. Uh, what were your expectations? Have they sort of met them? Or are you still – most coaches this time of year are hoping the, <clears throat> their best basketball is still ahead of them. Sure. And talk about this, what your hopes were for this season and exactly where you are right now. Well, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try very hard to not have expectations for a season. I have expectations for the next day, you know, and actually our mantra here that's on the back of our shirts and everywhere we can put it is today matters. And, and to me, if you go into that day trying to maximize your day and your relationships and your education and your practice and your games, uh, the, the expectations for the season will take care of themselves so you know even as we come up to the playoffs you know I wake up this morning and these guys will talk to you and I'm like hey today is about today's practice uh -huh. you know if we have a great practice today if we prepare hard today tomorrow will take care of itself and then we go into tomorrow with that same attitude and and to me if you just shoot if you stack that many days where, where that mattered where that day just mattered and you pulled the full potential of it uh, you probably had a pretty good life much less a good right. season you know and so so that's kind of where we're at I mean, obviously, going to the playoffs, I do feel like we're playing our best basketball right now, especially on the offensive side. Um, you know, we, we got a very tough um, region that we're kind of in, so, so we're going to have to play well. Uh, but I do think it, it, our best basketball is going to be ahead of us, and I, and I have high expectations for the next couple of games. Well, let me ask you this, and, and I don't know how much your background and the success you had has uh, maybe determined how you handled this situation, but – what are, are, are your expectations like being the head coach? You probably would prefer a certain type of game. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I ask the coach, well, in order to play that kind of game, you've got to have those kind of athletes. Mm -hmm. How much um, uh, maybe compromising might be the best word to use in this situation? How much do you have to compromise what you'd like to do with what you have to do because of athletes you have? Because they may not fit that game plan. You yeah, know. well, I, I mean, I, I don't know if it's compromised more than we just have program standards. Um, you know, I, I think if you got any coach up here from the area, they would tell you that uh, it doesn't matter if we're five foot five or seven foot two, we're going to defend 
uh, we're going to play the defensive end as hard as anybody that you're going to play against, especially in the half court. I mean, we kind of pride ourselves on on guarding because, uh, you know, really when you talk about, you know, changing from year to year, I think that more takes place maybe on the offensive end. I mean, maybe your best player is a post player one year. Maybe it's your point guard the next year. Uh, maybe what you do well on offense changes from time to time. Uh, but the defensive end is where you win basketball games. Right. And, and if shots aren't falling for whatever, reason that's what's going to keep you in the game and and we don't compromise there at all <laughs> right well let me ask you this question because uh, I would be curious with uh, your answer because defense does mean so much to you and it should anybody because like I was telling the coach before coach Haney if the other team's not scoring a lot then you've always got a better chance to win ball right. games ain't no right. doubt about that but talk when I talk to a coach about aggressive uh, defenses I think of Bucky McMillan and, mm -hmm. and Mountain Brook they're 32 minutes of heck, mm -hmm. to be nice, to put it right. that way. Right, right. But because I see their players play three or four minutes and then bam, they're out because mm -hmm. they're gassed. Right. And right. so, but it takes two things. One, it takes that to be your philosophy, and two, for you to have the athletes to play mm -hmm. it. So, but it sounds like uh, to me that defense is just as important to you and your right. team as your offensive situation. Right. Well, I mean, there, you know, there's, you know, what do they say, a hundred different ways to skin a cat. You right. know, we, yeah. we don't do it exactly like that um, necessarily, uh, but I think the, the result is a lot the same. Uh, the, the teaching points are a lot the same, and then what you demand out of your student athletes are a lot the same, and, and that's basically great effort and execution on what you talk about every day. Right. And uh, so, you know, philosophies can be different. You know, I, I think different people run different offenses. I mean, you know, you talk about the college ranks, John Carr Perry does things completely different than than Roy Williams. Both of them are successful. I really think it's about the, the the teams that sustain success like they have there, or the teams that even if they're up and down in talent a little bit, but every year they're a tough out, are because their program principles are the same year in year out. Whether they have a team that can go 27 and two, or whether they have a team that you know maybe is a little bit closer to the 500 realm, mm -hmm. you know what you're going to get every time you go on the floor and I think that's what you get with us you know we've had some super talented teams that have won a bunch of games and we've had some teams that have played tougher schedules for whatever reason and, and you know maybe not won as many games but you know with our kids and our young people I think it's a testament to them that you know uh, most nights when you step out there uh, you know you're going to get a bunch of kids that are going to play their butts off going to compete going to make it hard for you to score and um, you know if we can find ways ourselves to score um, we're going to be in a game and, um, and and you're going to have to play well to beat us. Well, Coach, as we sort of wind down a little bit, I guess the, the, the number one question that I would have in my mind, and you probably got in yours too, do you think your team is right now uh, poised to play their best basketball of the season? No, I, I do. I do. I mean, you know, I talk them all the time about the amount that they invest from a standpoint of their their – the hard work that we demand from them that they uh, readily put in, you know, the investment they make financially. I mean, all these things they put into it and you put into it for now, you know. I mean, you play a bunch of regular season games, but now is why we do those things. And I do think they've bought in. The biggest thing we're talking about now with them in the room, I'm going to remind them, is understanding uh, all the little things that you have to do correctly to win playoff games. And it's a different level of basketball. Oh, absolutely. The environment's completely different. The air almost smells different. <laughs> and, and and, you know, you get teams that, you know, you'll see a program like Mountain Brook who went five years without getting out of the area tournament, and then they finally got over the hump and it, and it released the floodgates. Right. Well, you know, we're kind of in that area right now. You know, it's my fourth year. Um, so we, we, we're in an area where, you know, we've got to do, figure out those little things that can get us over the hump, and then it might release those floodgates for us, and, and I'm hoping this this year. Well, Coach, uh, once again, uh, the most thing that I've, that I've enjoyed is uh, being able to reunite, uh, reunite with you again after a few years. And, and uh, I've watched to see how your team has done over here. And so I know that you're hoping that the best basketball is ahead of them. Right. I hope right. that for you too. But uh, more than anything, good luck. Thank and um, whatever will happen, as long as they give everything they've got, I don't know of any coaches ask, that yeah. ever dissatisfied Absolutely. with that. I appreciate best that of luck us. with the playoffs. Thank you. And folks, we'll take a quick break. We come back four young men, very instrumental in the outstanding season that Clay Chalk has had thus far. We'll be right back. And this will be your premium right here. Sorry to interrupt. I just want to say, I combined home and auto with State Farm. Saved 760 bucks. Love this guy. 
Okay, does it bother anybody else that the mime is talking? Freaky. Bundle home and auto, and you could save 760 bucks. That's 760 very good reasons to call Alan Gurdow in Trustville today. At Andrew Sports Medicine, we partner with our patients, trying to help them overcome the obstacles that keep them from achieving their goals. This practice aggressively pursues victory over injury, over pain, over limitation, over, over anything that's gonna keep you from being the best you can be. It starts with our non-surgical physicians who are trained in sports medicine and orthopedic injuries. Uh, we have specialists in sports medicine with shoulders, elbows, and knees. We have hip specialists that do uh, only hip surgery, including arthroscopy, minimally invasive resurfacing, and total hip replacement if needed. We have joint replacement surgeons. We have spine surgeons. We have surgeons that specialize in foot and ankle surgery and in hand surgery. So just about all the specialties of orthopedics are covered in injury sports medicine. What makes the great surgeons great is their volume of experience at making decisions, whether that's intraoperative decisions, post-operative decisions, pre-operative decisions, the decision to operate on somebody or not operate on them. And so our volume here breeds good decision making. That gives us an edge in terms of making decisions for our patients, which ultimately is a lot of times the difference between success and failure. The teams, the players, the parents have confidence in us because they know we're gonna communicate with them, we're gonna create a plan unique to that athlete or that person, and we're gonna get them back to their, their thing and as quickly and as safely as we can. At Andrew Sports Medicine, our mission is to partner with our patients and to help them succeed and, and achieve victory. Whether you're a weekend warrior, a grandparent with a shoulder problem, or a professional athlete, you get the same care, the same high-level technology, the same uh, aggressiveness that we would in a professional athlete, and we, we treat everyone the same way. None of us like to lose. We're all very competitive, and we're not going to lose against their illness or their injury. And folks, welcome back. As you can see, I got four strapping young athletes up here that look like they're ready to go to war. And I know the coach is hoping they're ready because it's playoff time and uh, for the basketball team. They've had a great uh, season thus far. Uh, let's get them introduced first. Uh, closest to me, Dayon Bryant, senior, and you're a forward. Yes, sir. Right? And then Cameron Ware, a senior point guard. Yes, sir. And Parker Charles, a senior shooting guard. Yes, sir. And then Donovan. Uh, how do you pronounce your last name? Shangasi. Uh, Shangasi? Yes, sir. Okay. And Don, I don't like to mispronounce guys' names or girls. Senior point guard. All right. A sophomore. A sophomore. I, my wife had to do that. She's going to love Matt. Okay. A sophomore point guard. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, good. All right, guys. Going into this season, first of all, we'll start with you, Dayon. Being a senior, how many years you been playing basketball here? I ain't clay. Mm -hmm. uh, all my life. All your life. Yes, so, sir. this is the, as the old saying goes, this is the last roundup for you, right? Yes, sir. All right, going into this season, uh, what did you personally think? What were your hopes for, for not only yourself, but the kind of season that your team would have this year? Um, my biggest goal this coming into this season this year was to um, make it to Jackson, Jacksonville this year. And, you know, just to have a better season than we did last year, you know. And, come in and compete, and that's what we've been doing. Okay, and, and Cameron, you're a senior as well. Have you been play how long have you been playing basketball here? Uh, I'm a, I, oh, okay, so uh, so you grew up here and you've been playing many years here, and yes, probably sir. what, on the varsity three or four years? Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Now, uh, as you get into the uh, uh, playoffs, do you feel like personally that your team is playing the best it can play, or is your best basketball still ahead of it? Uh, so far, we've been playing pretty hard, but we're still uh, we're pretty close to where we want to be. Okay. So you feel like if y'all play up to your expectations, that maybe we can do some damage in yes, the playoffs, sir. right? Okay. And Parker, um, you're a shooting guard as well. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, when I say uh, here the guys a shooting guard, that means you can score. Yes, sir. Okay. Do, do, do you? Do you enjoy that, uh, being a shooting guard? Because it, it puts a little, little extra pressure on you because they expect you to be able to score. Yes, sir. And so uh, how do you relish that, that uh, part of your game? 
I'm more like a defensive player, so like I like to play up on the guards and all that. So. Oh, okay, so you're one of these that uh, you like a transition player, for lack of yes, a better way to put it. If you make a steal and then start the action the other way, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And then Donovan, um, you're a point guard, which means you're almost like a, the quarterback out there. Do, do you like that um, uh, position where you are sort of the start of a lot of plays? Yes, sir. And and going into this season. Now, you being a sophomore, is this your first year to start? This is my first year on varsity. Oh, it is? Okay. And so, uh, have you characterized so far this year for you as being a very good first year? Yes, sir. I've been learning a lot. And, and do you think that your team is peaking at the right time? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, now I know uh, I've done talk with the coach about the fact that y'all play in a pretty tough area. Uh, Dayon, when you looked at your your schedule, was there any teams on your schedule that you look forward to playing during the year? Uh, I just I really look forward to playing everybody this year. So whoever it is, just bring it on, right? Yeah, bring it on. Okay. Uh, Cameron, how about you? Does any uh, do you look forward to playing them all, or do you know you got to do well in your uh, area games? But pretty much all of them. Like our coach I always say. The next game. Yeah, well, the next game is always the most yeah, important game, important. isn't it? Um, Parker, uh, one of the most important elements in a team is team chemistry. Yes, if the team gets along real well, chances are two things. One, you're going to be the best you can be, and two, your teammates, so your team's going to end up being the best that it can be. Talk about the, the chemistry on this year's team. I think we have good chem chemistry. Everybody gets along real well. We laugh, joke, but when it's time to – Come serious, we uh we get it together and get ready to play. Okay, and and Donovan, I know um, uh, the chemistry has to be an important thing with you because, like I said, the point guard, uh, he's a very important part of that offensive team. And so, talk about the were there teams uh, your first year that that you looked forward to playing or um, teams that it didn't matter who it was. I mean, I was ready for all of them. Just they weren't specific teams I was looking for. Okay. Now, three of you guys are, are being seniors, and, and Dayon, we'll start with you. First of all, um, do you know where you're going to be going to school next year? No, sir, I don't. I, I don't. Okay. Now, when you get to school, uh, what, what do you hope to do one day, be in the sports field, or is there another field that you might want to go into and, and uh, hopefully have a career in one day? Hopefully everything goes right with basketball and after basketball, I will, um, I really want to pursue and become a veterinarian. Oh really? Okay, well, that'd be that'd be terrific. Uh, Cameron, how about you? Uh, I want to go in like technology field, or something like that. Okay. Now, uh, have you ever thought about somewhere down the road you might end up being a, a basketball coach? Or? Um, I don't really think about it too much, but. It can well, you know, well, let me tell you why I say that. I guarantee you, I've talked to a lot of high school basketball coaches, and very few of them said that to start with, that's what they wanted to be, that they wanted to be something else and ended up being coaches yeah. and very good ones at that, too. Parker, how about you? Um, I'm going to South Alabama next year to pursue a career in computer engineering. Oh, okay, okay. And then, Donovan, you don't have to worry about where you're going for the next couple of years. You just got to worry about playing basketball, okay, yeah. and being very good at it. Now, with that thought in mind, let me tell you this. I know two things about you guys before you ever come up here. One is you're good athletes. The other ones, you're good students. If you want, you wouldn't be on the basketball team. Now, having said that, and we're going to start with you, Donovan, after a grueling week of practice for coach and after a grueling week in the books, what does Donovan do to relax and unwind? Well, if I'm not at work, I'll probably just sit at home, probably watch, probably play the game. Okay, all right. Or we'll go to the Y, something like that. All right, how about you, Parker? Um, chill at the house or go play the game. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Hanging around the house, nothing wrong with that. Parker? Uh, I, rel I relax at home. Play, play the video games. Yeah, well, I often wonder uh, what guys do like that to take the edge off. Um, how about you, Dayon? They go to the gym again. <laughs> oh, I, I'm telling you. Now, if, if, if being successful is determined, and I'm going to address this right at the coach, uh, of putting in the time away from the gym, this guy's going to be successful. 
I know because I see him every morning I'm there. But on the other hand, too, then I'm, I, I'm pretty strict with what I do, too, ain't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> well, all right. Now, listen, guys, um, and, and I want to ask you all about this, too, because we always ask the coaches. But, uh, and, Dayon, we'll start with you. Do you think that you and your teammates are playing your best basketball right now or still your best basketball is waiting out there for you? Uh, we're doing some pretty good things right now, but it's it's always something that we can improve on, and I'm. Uh, it's our best basketball is gonna be ahead of us. Okay, okay. How about you, Cameron? I pretty much the same as what he said. Every day we're getting better and better, just trying to get to the main goal. Yeah, and and then also, uh, I guess, and the coach probably tells you this a whole lot more than I would. But you, especially when you get to the playoffs, it's one game at a time. Never look ahead. The next guy is the guy you've got to worry about. How about you, Parker? Our best basketball is ahead of us. We're OK. Ready to go. And so, uh, Donovan, you're going to be a very important guy in the playoffs. These guys feel their best basketball is ahead of them. You're the one that's going to have to get them the ball a lot of times, right? Yes, sir. Well, I tell you what, uh, first of all, it's been awfully good to visit with you guys. And, and I hope that your best basketball is still ahead of you. But as we conclude the interview, um, I, I want to ask this question, and then uh, to this point in your young life, who's been the most inspirational person or persons in your life? And we'll start with you, Donovan. Uh, I'd say my mama. Okay. Mom's always there for us, right? Yes, sir. We can mess up on the court. We can mess up in the classroom. It's hard to mess up with mom, ain't it? But when we do, she knows how to straighten us out, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Parker, how about you? My parents. Your parents are good for you. Cameron? Pretty much my entire family. Well, good. It's it's great to have th that support from your family. Whether you win, lose, or draw, you know they're, they're always there for you, right? Dion, how about, how, Dion, how about you? Uh, it, it, it's multiple, not just my family and my friends, but, you know, Coach Masa, he kind of influences you a lot, too. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, you know, the coaches, whether you all believe it or not, they want you two things out of you. They want the best you got to offer on the basketball court. But more than that, they want you to be successful once your life away from high school basketball is over. So they play a very important part in your life. But guys, the next week or two is going to be a pretty important part of your life right now, right? Mm -hmm. Your best basketball is still ahead of you. Wouldn't it be nice if y'all win the championship? We'd have y'all. I'd come back over here and we'd celebrate it. Okay, yeah, right. so uh, that may say, God, I don't want to see Snapper no more. I don't care if we win or not. Or it may say, Hey, I'm going. We want to Snapper back there. But all the coach wants, and I know all y'all want, is to play your best basketball. Okay, so but good luck, three seniors. Good luck in whatever endeavors y'all get into and where you go to school best luck in the future okay Thank you. and uh, folks once again we've had another great evening uh, two outstanding coaches with their athletes we'll do it again next week but to then you know what the snapper always says bicycle you can catch our show on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify breaker pocket cast radio public stitcher and youtube you can also visit us on our social media outlets, Facebook and Twitter. Be sure to like and subscribe to our platforms. If you have an idea for a show topic or would like to be a sponsor, please email us at castbshow321 at gmail.com.